What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to share something with you guys that are new to the SP world and it's something that I realised over the past couple of days because I've been spending a lot of time making beats in Ableton and coming back to the SP and thinking about how it works and how you make beats with the SP I figured out something really interesting and quite important I think and if we'd have known this at the start I think this would have made my progression on it a lot easier and a lot quicker. So in order to explain what I mean by this if you're already a beat maker, say you've been using a door, for example, I think this is going to be the most easy to understand for you guys. If you've come from somewhere where it's very, very easy to put beats together, where you've got full creativity, you can basically make any sound sound like anything you want it to with the built-in effects, etc., etc., that you get in Ableton and other doors like Reason or Logic or Fruit Loop Studio or FL Studio, as it's referred to now. You get so much control over the sounds that you're using in that, that making things gel together and making drums especially fit over the samples, it's actually relatively straightforward to do. So it may take some time, it may take a lot of EQ, it may take compression, etc, etc, but it is possible to do. Now, when you come to the SP, okay, there's all sorts of workarounds that you can do, but this whole process of trying to get things to gel together, trying to get drum sounds to sit with samples, I think at first, when you first get this uh, device, it is actually probably one of the most frustrating and difficult things to do. And I think the reason for this is because when you're new to making beats or when you've come from a world where beat making is a lot easier to do because of the reasons that I've just said, sound selection actually becomes way, way more important. So like I've mentioned, if you're from a door based background, sound selection isn't quite as important because you can kind of manipulate things to sound how you need them to sound quite easily. When you're on the SP, it's a lot harder to do this. And this is definitely an issue I had at, at the start with making beats on my SP. I would have a sample and then the drums would just kind of feel like they'd just been like stuck on top. And there was no sort of cohesion between the two things. And thinking back to that and what I was doing wrong, it was definitely one of the reasons why. It was because I wasn't choosing the right drum sounds for the sample. So. This is a really important thing to learn and it's really difficult to learn as well because basically it just comes kind of with experience. You need to find what's missing in a sample in terms of its sort of frequency range and you need to fill those gaps with the drums so that it becomes a complete full spectrum of sound. Now this isn't going to happen overnight and basically this is one of the reasons I want to share this with you guys is because it takes time for your ears to train themselves and your brain to train itself to find the right sounds for the mix that you're working with or for the sample that you're working with. It's going to take time sitting down and making loads and loads of beats and this is advice that I always give to beginners with the SP really is just try and make as many beats as you can when you're starting out. Just keep making beats, keep experimenting with sounds and then eventually your brain and your ears will start working so much better for you that you'll know what sounds are needed for a beat or for a sample and you'll get much better at sound selection. So for beginner beat makers, my advice is start sampling and have as many drum sounds and noises available to you as you can. So if you need to stock up on your drums, there's loads of resources online where you can get drums from. There's packs from all sorts of places, including myself. If you want to go to spvids.com, you can check out my lo-fi drum packs there. There's places on Reddit you can get a hold of drums very, very easily. So Try and build a big collection of drums first. I think that's probably the best place to, to start. Then start getting samples into your SP device and then experiment as much as you can with getting sounds, drum sounds in particular, that will sit over those samples correctly. Now, when you find a drum sound that works with a sample, it may not come across as that in your head. It may not be like, oh, that's definitely the right frequency range that I needed for that sample. It may just feel or sound right. So you, you may just hear a snare over the top and go, that's, that snare works with that sample, definitely, 100%. And that's kind of the process you just have to go with. When you get better at making beats and the more beats that you make, this just happens quicker. And you may almost develop a bit of an intuition for it. So you may know straight away that, right, I need a really high sounding crack snare on this sample because I don't want it to have any sort of low muddiness or anything like that. It needs to be high up and, and in the mix at that sort of high range frequency. And the same with kicks as well. If you've got a sample, let's say, that doesn't do much in the low end, you might need a really low kick that fills that low end that's missing from the sample. So this is really what is frustrating about the SP at first I find it's very hard to blend things together and it's because you haven't given your brain the chance to develop itself in terms of 
sound selection. So sound selection is a huge part of beat making and it's something that doesn't come naturally like I say but if you're in this place and you're feeling exactly what I'm talking about then just keep going with your beat making, keep experimenting, build up your drum collection and just keep putting sounds next to samples, going through different snares and trying them one at a time and seeing which one works and trying to figure out why it works. The more you do that, the more you train your ears and your brain to understand what a beat needs. So I hope this was useful advice, guys. If you've been doing this a lot, then please let me know. If you don't think you have been doing this much and you're going to go and try and do it more, then please leave a comment below and let me know. If you do think that these tips have helped you guys, then please hit a thumbs up. That really helps me in the algorithms. And yeah, I just hope this helps you to make better beats and I hope it helps you to realize that that very frustrating part of making beats on the SP is annoying at first but in the long run as a beat maker this is going to do a huge amount of good for you because you're going to train your ears and brain to be able to know what sounds are required so just be a little bit patient bear with it this is why this device is very very unique it does require a lot of attention from your ears and your brain to use it effectively and at first obviously that needs training so stick in there keep making beats with it and eventually you will get better at making beats and you will get better at sound selection and then when you move back to something like a door to make beats you'll find it infinitely easier to make better sounding beats thanks a lot for tuning in guys i will be back with content very very soon so don't forget to smash that subscribe button below the videos if you're new around here keep making beats and i'll see you all again soon peace